One of the most important things because the subconscious mind uh, really has fundamental programs of life that we acquire from our parents, our family, our community uh, between uh, the last trimester of pregnancy and the first seven years. So this is why nature created the first seven years of a child's life to download how to be a member of a family and a society and a culture by strictly observing other people. It's actually a brain function. It's a equivalent of hypnosis. Yes. Okay. So the fundamental programs of your subconscious are not yours. The conscious mind is yours. That's the creative mind. Well, the issue is that the conscious mind uh, can travel in time. What are you doing next week? Yeah. Your mind lets go the moment goes to next week. What did you do last week? Let's go the moment and you move into last week. Or I say, I think of something in your head. Uh, and the moment you're thinking, you're not paying attention. Well, this is what the function of the subconscious comes in. When you're not paying attention, you go to autopilot. So it's not like you're walking down the street and you have a thought and then stop. Like that. No, you continue walking. Yeah, but you're not paying attention. So it's a subconscious that does all the jobs from walking to driving the car. Uh, and so why is this relevant? Because when we're not paying attention and we default to the subconscious, we start we play the programs that are in the subconscious. And I go, yeah, but the programs in the subconscious are primarily not yours. They came from other people. The, the, and most of them, as psychologists tell us, most of the programs we get are disempowering, self-sabotaging, and limiting. And the relevance about that is this. If I'm going to play those programs, then I'm, by definition, I'm going to be shooting myself in the foot. The reason why you play the subconscious program is because the conscious mind's engaged with thinking, which is 95% of the time or more. And that means 95% of your behavior is invisible to you. And why I really want to emphasize this so much is this, because we believe we're victims. Oh, you know, I really wanted to be successful. I wanted to be healthy. I wanted to have a great relationship and it's not working out. Yeah. And then you say, well, that was my intention and it's not working. So therefore the world's against me. And then we go into victims like, God, I really wanted it. It didn't happen. And I just wanted people to wake up because it basically is this. It's not the world against you at all. The world will give you everything. The issue is you're not operating from your conscious mind, except 5% at the most. And so your life is really a reflection of your subconscious programming. Yes. Now you say to me, well, I got programmed from the last trimester of pregnancy, first seven years, so I was being programmed when I was one and two and three, and I go, absolutely. And you say, but what, what were the programs? I wasn't there. I have no idea what the hell the programs are. And I go, here's the neat part. 95% of your life is coming from the subconscious. So all you have to do is look at your life and just look at it and say, for what? I say, what comes to you that you want and it comes to you easily, you have programs to allow that to happen. But what you struggle with, what you work hard on, what you, you have to put a lot of effort into, why are you working so hard? And the answer is simple, because you have an invisible program that is sabotaging you from that point. So now all of a sudden you say, well, what do I need to change? I say, well, look at your life yes. and tell me what you're having trouble with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because that's the, the, the direct expression of a program that's not supporting you. There's always been a belief that the conscious and the subconscious minds are one and the same. So if I educate my conscious mind, then my subconscious mind should automatically know what the heck I just did, yeah. right? So then I say, well, yeah, guess what? How many self-help books did you read? And I go, oh, I read all these self-help books. I say, now that you read them, did your life change? And the answer is, no, not really, but I'm really smart because if you ask me any questions about the self-help book, I can answer it. I say, well, what's the issue? And the issue is this, the conscious mind is creative. So yeah, I could read the book. I could watch this video with you in it. I could uh, even just go, aha, and the conscious mind could accept that and learn it. But the subconscious mind does not learn that way. And that has been the problem because we educate the conscious mind to get really smart and our life stays exactly the same as it is. And the issue is why? Because it doesn't translate from the conscious to the subconscious. Because the subconscious learns in, well, three to four fundamental ways. Number one, the first way it learned seven years was hypnosis because the brain was operating at a low vibrational frequency and just downloading what it saw. After you're seven, how do you learn? Habituation. How'd you learn the ABCs or the times table? You had to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and finally you got it and then you know how to do it. You want to drive a car? You have to practice and practice and then you learn how to do it. So if you want to change the subconscious mind, hypnosis is number one, that works. Uh, number two, repetition, habituation. Yes. Create a habit. And at first it seems like a struggle because it's new to the subconscious mind, but hey, you didn't learn ABCD the first time you said it, you know? You That's had to right. do it again and again. 
but after you do it for a repetition period, it will be so natural that if you're not doing it, your subconscious mind go, hey, what's happening? We're not doing it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's really good. We overcome that. Um, a, a third way, which is um, very, uh, uh, some people get in, it's very powerful, but I wouldn't recommend it, is tremendous emotional shock. <laughs> 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 Boom! Something happens in your life and it's so dramatic that after that moment, you're not going to be the same person. The subconscious uh, got it right there. Okay. Yeah. And the newer one and the better one is um, a whole new field of uh, uh, belief change modalities, which are also associated with what's called energy psychology. Yes. Uh, and, and these are wonderful uh, because basically uh, it's a form of super learning. And what's neat about it, the conventional things like hypnosis or habituation, there's a time element that takes a long time. Yeah. But these new belief change modalities, uh, like a super learning experience, you can change a belief you've had your whole life, 50 years, and change it in 10 minutes. And so this is really, it's really, it's a new type of psychology that's coming in, but it's really necessary because as they say, uh, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. We're running into a world that has a lot of necessity to change very, very quickly. So uh, we're really happy to see that there are ways of changing without going through all that anxiety and stress and we can do it really quickly. My favorite one is the one that I use because I'm most familiar with it, but there's many of them in my books. I give a whole list, but the one I, I use is called Psych-K, like the abbreviation of psychology. It actually represents psychological kinesiology. Uh, uh, and it's an exercise where you, you get your right and your left brain hemispheres to work in harmony, which they don't do on a normal day-by-day -day basis. And when you get them to work in harmony, that's called brain synchronization, a window sort of opens up and you can drop in a new belief in five minutes. You know, it's really fun because you say, well, what if you can release these programs? And that's uh, the story of the Matrix, where I say, well, I take the red pill, I get out of the program. And then I say, yeah, but in real life, Every time we've taken that red pill, I say, what's the red pill in real life? And the answer is falling in love. Falling in love with the person or falling in love with a, um, your creativity or whatever it is, falling in love. Because when you fall in love, what you're doing is so captivating and so engrossing and so desirable, you don't let your conscious mind wander. So the first time in your life, your conscious mind staying present. And I say, well, why is that important? Conscious mind, wishes, desires, and aspirations. If you're operating from that mind, you manifest your wishes and desires. So my conclusion for all of this blah, blah, blah that I'm giving you is simply this. What if you go into the subconscious mind and change the programs in the subconscious mind so they reflect the wishes and desires of your conscious mind? What would that mean? And I'll tell you what it means. You'll live in a honeymoon for every day of your life on this planet for a simple reason. Yeah. If my conscious mind with wishes and desires begins to wander and I default into the subconscious and is playing my wishes and desires, I never left the honeymoon. Most people's stresses are not real uh, immediate emergency stresses at all. They're beliefs of a fear of that they won't have something, they won't have a job, they won't have food, they won't have a friend. And, and it's not that they don't have them right now, they're thinking about, oh, that happens! And that's where the stress comes from, and that's why 90% of the people are in fear because they, they recognize that their future is uncertain, but rather than seeing it in a positive way, they, they have a, a, you know, this image of a negative work, thing. Work it all out. And, and, and it's really interesting because, remember, when you fall in love and you get out of the program, you create heaven. Well, if it wasn't for the programming, everybody would have heaven on earth. Yes. So if we can change the programming, then heaven on earth is available.